Now, the hardest thing to get across to people about the gospel is the fact that they cannot save themselves. The Bible says the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? A man's heart will do anything in this world to get out of admitting that there's nothing he can do to merit righteousness with God. There is something about the human heart that's incurably wicked. When we say wickedness, of course, we usually think of drunkards and harlots and thieves and bad, rotten people. But that is not the sense in which wickedness is used in the Bible. Wickedness in the Bible refers to people who try everything they can to keep from admitting that they cannot merit favor with God by their works. The Bible says all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and the most wicked people in your town are the people that think they please God and can get to heaven by their works. That's why people don't read the Bible. The Bible hits the root. It doesn't hit the symptoms. The symptoms may be drunkenness or envy or greediness or bad temper, but the root of human wickedness is pride, self-preservation, one of the basic instincts, which, of course, is a rotten, godless instinct. Christ said, if you want to preserve your life, lose it. If you lose it, you'll save it. All right, here's a man. I'm going to draw you a picture of a man trying to meet God's standard. God has a standard. Now, by the standard of your neighbors, you, you're pretty good. By the standard of the average preacher, you make out all right. By the standard of most people you know, I guess you think you're a pretty good fellow, and you might be. But let's see how you measure according to God's standard. God does have a standard. That standard is found in the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments has never, never been revoked or surpassed by any laws for men as a superior set of laws to live by. The Ten Commandments, the highest set of laws a man can live by. You don't live by them, but they're still the highest set you can live by. All right, what is the first commandment? Christ said the first and great commandment is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This, he said, was the first and great commandment. There are commandments, and then there are commandments. But the first commandment, Jesus Christ called the first and great commandment. And people who profess to follow his teaching must admit that the first and great commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. That's the standard. That's the T-square. That's the rule to go by. That's the slide rule. That's God's measurement the first commandment. Now, do you see how far short this man falls of that? You never met a man in your life that loved the Lord God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength, and with all his mind. He reserved some of it for himself. The Bible says the best man, or every man at his best state, is altogether vanity. Now look at this man trying to meet the standard. He joined the church. Well, it's a fine thing, but he still isn't anywhere near the standard. The standard is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. He gets baptized. That's fine. But notice he isn't anywhere near the standard. He's not anywhere near it. He doesn't even come close to it. He supposes that he does. Somebody told him that if he'd do these things, he'd meet the standard, but that doesn't come anywhere near it. All right? Not only that, he takes the sacraments. Somebody said that the means of grace and all that kind of nonsense... Well, there may be the means of grace to save people, but people who have never met this standard are not saved people. There is God's standard. Now, do you see how far you've fallen short of the glory of God? Well, a fellow said, I think I do pretty well. Of course you do, big boy, but you're short a mile. You say, well, I think I'm not as bad as you. Come on, come on. You're still short. You're still short. Oh, well, yes, you say, I'm short, but that's what I'm talking about, the human heart. The human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The human heart will do anything except admit the truth. The truth is, you're short. That's the truth. You say, well, I think I do pretty, but you're short. You say, well, I get along as well as, but you're short. And you won't say it, and you won't admit it. And that's what the Bible means when the Bible says the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The human heart will do anything to keep from admitting there's nothing it can do to merit favor with God. Maybe this fellow reads the Bible. I suppose that's a good thing. But, of course, that has nothing to do with meeting the standard. There's the standard. Well, you say, I believe a fellow reads the Bible shows he loves God. Yes, but that isn't the standard. The standard is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, 
with all thy strength, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Why, this fellow prays. says, I think you can show that you love God through prayer. Yes, that's fine, but it doesn't come anywhere near the standard. And so forth and so on. This man may be a, a good man. He may be the best man in his community. Maybe you're the best man in your community. But I would call your attention to the fact you're short. You'll never make it. If you have all these things, may I point out to you that you're still just as far short as if you hadn't started. You're not anywhere near it. Why, suppose, suppose, uh, suppose a man, suppose a man was trying to be a member of the police force and the requirement to be a policeman was to be five foot nine and the fellow thought was five feet eight. He would, they wouldn't make him a policeman. Well, if the standard was five feet nine, the fellow was five feet eight and a half. He still would make it. <laughs> but you say, I'm five feet and three quarters. You are five feet eight and three quarters. You're only a quarter inch from five feet nine on you. You are fine. You're missing a mile. You never make it. That's something people can't get through their head. I remember one time when I was over in the Philippines, an officer had his hand blown off with a Japanese uh, parachute bomb. He was trying to get the fuse off it. And it blew off and blew his hands off. And the GI that was with him tried to get him to the hospital. And that GI went tearing down a mountain side in the Jeep. And that lieutenant was sitting there with his hands blown off and the stumps of his arms dripping blood in the bottom of the Jeep. And he was saying, hurry, Bill, hurry, Bill, hurry, Bill. And old Bill was driving that Jeep like a house on fire. And all the way down to the hospital, he laid down on the horn. And when he got down to the hospital, every doctor and nurse that place was standing there at the door to try to get that poor fellow into the hospital. And they got him in, but, but just they got him in the door, he died. Now, don't misunderstand me. They tried to get him in, but they didn't make it. Now, I'm not being harsh with the fellow. He tried his very best to get the man there in time. I don't criticize him. I'm not being critical. He made a good effort, <laughs> but he didn't make it. Now, don't misunderstand me. He did the best he could. But he didn't make it. And you won't make it either. You never make it in your own righteousness. Suppose you were drowning. How much water would it take to drown you? If you were six feet under the water and dying and couldn't get up to the surface, would you be any more drowned than you would be if you were an inch under the water and couldn't make the surface? My friend, if you're under the water and can't make the surface, you just can't make the surface. And you can drown just as dead as a drowned rat in two inches of water as you can in 10 feet of water. If you're under the water, you still can't breathe. Isn't it funny? People say, well, I'm doing the best I can. Well, that's immaterial. Fellow says, well, I, I think if I try to do what I think is right, all go on. You're trying to duck it. You're trying to dodge it. Face the fact. You're not anywhere near it. You never have been. You never will be. What's the answer? Well, the answer is, I'll show you a man who did meet it. The Lord Jesus Christ met the standard. He loved the Lord God with all his heart with all his soul, with all his strength, with all his mind. There's only one man that ever lived that kept the first commandment, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you receive him as your Savior, you will have kept the first commandment through him. You'll never make it yourself. You'll never make it in your own righteousness. You don't have a chance, but if you receive him as your Savior, you'll have a chance because he kept it. Can I make it plain? How plain can I make it? If I could make it any plainer for you, I suppose I'd stand on my head. <laughs> I guess I'd do anything in the world to get you to Christ if I thought I could do it. If I thought I could climb through the lens of that television screen right now and come out in your living room and seize you by the shoulders and shake some sense into your head. If I thought by doing that, I'd get you to Christ, I'd probably do it. <laughs> Can't you see? I know you're a good fella. You're a good lost fella. I know you're a good woman. You're just a good lost woman. you never make it. Look at you. Look at you with all your junk. You never will make it. You say, well, I, I'm trying. Well, I has nothing to do with it. You can try or not try. You still don't make it. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. The only way you'll ever get to heaven is meet God's standard. God's standard is perfection. You can't make it. You say, well, I try pretty hard. Oh, come on. I'm getting tired of hearing that. Cut that out, will you? If you weren't just the worst egomaniac in town, you wouldn't keep saying that. Listen, if you weren't so full of yourself, you could hardly live with anybody. You just say, I'm short. I have fallen short of the glory of God. I can't make it. Lord Jesus, please save me. Now, isn't that plain? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Are these things righteous? Then they'll never get you to heaven. Because it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Are those things right? Then you go to hell with them. The Bible says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. 
It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now I've gone for you. You hear a perfect man. If you receive him as, as your Savior, you'll meet the standard. You won't be a quarter of an inch short, a half an inch short, or a sixteenth of an inch short. You'll make it. If you have him, you have God's righteousness. And you will get to heaven when you die. Now suppose I reach my pocket and pull out a pen. Let's just imagine something. Suppose we're in a room together and you say, I want to leave the room. And I say, all right, I've got the door locked and I can let you out of the room or keep you here, whatever I want to do. And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you out of that door just as soon as you take a pen exactly like this one and place it in my hand. And suppose this pen has my name on it. Well, you say, do you mean to tell me I've got to stay in this room until I give you a pen just exactly like that? I say, yes, sir, same make, shape, size, color, design, signature. You can't get out of this room. I suppose I said that. You can't get out of this room until you give me a pen exactly like this one. <laughs> well, you stay in that room forever. <laughs> you never would get out. But now, wait a minute. Suppose I said, you can't get out of this room until you place in my hand a pen just like this one. See? I said, put it right there. And he said, I can't put it there. I don't have a pen exactly like that one. And I said, I right, look at here. You can't leave this room until you put a pen in my hand exactly like this one. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you this one. You know what you can do? You can reach out and take that pen out of my hand, out of this hand, and put it in that one, and you can get out the door. Have I made it plain? The gift of God is eternal life. God says you can't get into heaven until you produce a perfect man. A perfect, sinless man. You can't make it. You say, Lord, I, 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 I'm not perfect, I'm not sinless, I guess I can't make it. And God says, well, look at here. Here's a perfect, sinless man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a perfect, sinless man. Now you take him. You take him. And then when you get to heaven, you give me him. And I'll let you in. How plain do you want it? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you people that will not receive a perfect sinless man as your Savior, and you people that are going about to establish your own righteousness, have only proved one thing. You prove that you have a wicked, deceitful heart and have no intention of pleasing God or loving God. If you loved him and wanted to please him, you would accept his son as your personal savior, and that would fulfill the first commandment. Then if you wanted to take care of these things, that'd be your business. But it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That's that.